A very good morning to you. You're welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's Thursday, a beautiful Thursday morning. How are you doing? My name is Rume Paulson. My name is Nyamgo Agaji. It's a beautiful Thursday, as she has said. So mm -hmm. one day to, thank God, it's Friday. The weekend! So, <laughs> yeah, I know that some people uh, work uh, are in the kind of... Uh, jobs that they don't have weekend but somehow you have to find time every once in a while to give yourself some rest mm -hmm. and we especially at this time that uh, a lot of people are going through so much stress and we're not doing much about our mental health mm -hmm. but we're not talking mental health today we we'll mm -hmm. hope to be looking at business um, uh, when we discuss today and yeah. hope that uh, you are going to make your plans better and better for 2024. Yeah, we'll be looking at the 2025 broadband target dicey as 31 states remain underserved and also how the types of investment to make in 2024. We'll also be seeing what the national dailies are saying this morning as well as taking some top trending stories. But first, let's look at our quotes of the day and set the tone for this fine Thursday morning. The only place where success comes before work is in the dictionary, and that is from Vidal Sassoon. Yes, the only place where success comes before work is in the dictionary. So don't expect to have success overnight. Right? Yeah. What do you think about that? First of all, I'd like to add that it's in the English dictionary because success in my language... is an English word. Yeah, so uh, when, we, when we talk about success, we should not translate it into our local dialects because it might come before work. <laughs> uh, so, but bottom line is that, like you said, uh, you don't expect to have success overnight. You could have it overnight, but it has to be that in the morning before that night, you had put in some work. Mm -hmm. that, so that's why it's not overnight. Yeah, so that, that makes made you have this success so uh, like they say suffer before pleasure suffering doesn't always have to be that you have to go hungry you have to wear rags you have to uh, suffer hard labor and all mm. that but you have to do something that will give you the success not mm -hmm. success before doing what you need mm -hmm. to do i think instead of suffer before pleasure i would like to say sacrifice before pleasure so you have to give in something whatever you call it you have to <laughs> suffer <laughs> no it doesn't have to be so it's just, it just because if you use the word surf, suffer uh, people connect to something that is always that's really negative. bad yes so that's negative suffering doesn't always have to be that you are um you you are suffering how do i put this <laughs> let's, let's just look at that sacrifice before um pleasure i mean you have to give in something in and the, in, in, the, in the days of ritual is done to oh, sacrifice oh, okay not that kind of sacrifice i mean <laughs> just giving so in every something. word might have might have might be its ambiguous. own connotations yeah, it depends right. on how you see it but the work will have to come before success otherwise mm -hmm. you may not have the success you want that's the bottom line okay. yeah and i'm um, talking about it in my generation where you know, people like to say we're, we're in a microwave generation. Everybody wants to, you know, just be on the gram, be on social media, showing that, you know, they're living their best life. I mean, it's good to live your best life, but don't do it. Um, don't do something negative to get that. So as long as you're doing everything possible legally, morally, I mean, I'm no moral, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm no moral compass, but everything for your own conscience, legally, morally, to ensure that you're getting that success, then why not? But don't think that overnight you just wake up one morning, you see a, a bag of $30 billion on the road, you pick it up and your life is better. No, you have to start to put certain work in and all of that would pay off in the end and that's where you get your success. Yeah. So. There's a saying that, 
I don't like, and I think it should, people should stop using it, the end justifies the means. It mm. doesn't. The end and the means have to go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. uh, you cannot tell me that you kill somebody so that you can save a situation and you say because yeah, you saved it, you, you, be, you became rich, you can kill your brother or your friend or anything just because you wanted to arrive at that point they will call you a rich man. It doesn't justify the means. You do something bad to get something good, it still makes it bad. Mm -hmm. So the end and the means will have to, you know, uh, be the same. You yeah. have to go hand in hand. You cannot just do anything. That right. You want. I mean, it's business Thursday, so this is focused on business. So that's what we're talking about your success. And later on, we'll be talking about the types of investments you should make in 2024. For that success, you need to invest something, invest your time, invest your finances, um, any other thing that requires, even, even yourself, <laughs> even the talent that you have, you need to invest that. So we'll be talking more about that later on. Anyways, let's move over to our top trending stories. And the first one this morning in is U.S. Secretary Blinken commissions American corner in Lekki. The U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken on Wednesday commissioned the American corner in the Lekki area of Lagos State. The innovative and tech-enabled American space in Lagos is aimed at supporting youth innovation, entrepreneurship, and creativity in Nigeria. The technology bolsters the Biden administration U.S. strategies towards sub-Saharan Africa's objective to drive digital transformation and stimulate an inclusive digital ecosystem. Blanken, who is in his second day in Nigeria, was accompanied in the inauguration of the space by the Minister of Communications, Innovation and Digital Economy, Boston Tijani, and other U.S. government officials. His visit to Nigeria is part of his ongoing tour in Africa. I mean, this is great for everyone. Um, I love it when we incorporate technology into our everyday lives. I mean, we also talked about that on Tuesday. Um, but yes, I mean, the, the, African, the American corner, what do you think about that? I'm just thinking about the fact that it is the American people that are having a corner in Nigeria to encourage youth to do the, the things they're supposed to do in technology. How much is our own country doing? Mm. Uh, how much technological hub do we have or hubs do we have in Nigeria? Uh, in fact, in all the states. How many wards of our local governments have something like an ICT center, which mm. doesn't take anything uh, to do by anybody who is ser serving us, whether a council or a chairman or something. So there are still people who are not IT savvy in our country that should be leading in uh, innovation, technical innovation in the, the, in the African uh, continent. So. Yeah. Well, America has done it, it's good, but we need more indigenous uh, input into mm -hmm. growing technology in Nigeria and encouraging the people that have been doing well. We hear uh, a young man in the north, for instance, who developed a, a car that runs on solar, and we've not heard anything about it, the government saying something about, uh, you know, uh, giving him the needed support that he mm -hmm. has to in a Help country, him, yeah, a country that has so much sun and we have a technology that can run without fuel even if we are the ones that are producing the highest uh, fuel in the world or the oil in the world we should explore other technologies mm -hmm. and sell out these technologies but it's not being done so we're waiting for america to have a corner in nigeria why is it Britain, called american corner american that's, that's a question yeah, it is their corner <laughs> and they are the, whatever they do in that space they are the it's ones that them. are sponsoring it now they say this is the greatest con the country with the greatest number of this kind of american corner uh, i think this one that has been launched now makes it 25 in Nigeria alone. Mm. So how many does Nigeria have of those kind of places in, that their, own country. in their own country? That's the question I'm asking. Maybe if they have so much, I don't know much about it. Mm. So yeah. And I hope, I mean, it's almost free for everybody. You can go there and just learn more because, I mean, we're seeing the, the Minister of Communications, um, Innovation and technology, you know, being there, doing all of these things. And honestly, I wouldn't lie. I'm happy at where this administration is going to. Um, we're just hoping that things start to get better and everybody's pulling their weight. So if you're in humanitarian affairs, you should be doing <laughs> the right thing. <laughs> um, but yes, wherever you are, like just pull your weight. You're there to do a job. Go there, do the job. And yes. I like think a lot of ministers are doing well. Yes. Are doing well. I'm, I'm know, actually happy. I know there are some policy somersaults that we are seeing uh, that are very ill-advised and all that. Yeah. Um, for instance, I saw yesterday that the president is trying to give an order, an executive order, that will prevent people who want to leave 
from living, like not people who want to jack bar, but mm -hmm. people who foreign businesses that are in Nigeria that mm -hmm. intend to leave because of whatever reason they're giving. How do you give a, an executive order that people don't leave? So another person who wants to come and invest knows that if the conditions are not right anymore, I cannot leave because yeah. there's something in that country that will prevent me from. I don't know who advises the, uh, the government or the president uh, to take some of these decisions mm. that it takes. Well, the next thing is um, heart-wrenching. Gunmen killed 30 in fresh Plateau attack. No fewer than 30 persons were killed in Plateau State in the early hours of Wednesday by gunmen who attacked uh, Kwahai Slak, Slak Lek village. Oh man, these names. Mm -hmm. uh, in Mangu, local government area of the state. It was gathered that the victims, who were mostly women and children, had run to the house of a community leader in the area on Tuesday night for safety following an earlier unrest during the day in Mangu town when the gunmen surrounded them and killed all of them. A community leader in the area, Mark Haruno, confirmed the death toll uh, in just the state capital on Wednesday. According to him, the unrest in Mangu town the day before created fears in many communities leading to some people in the village ev evacuating their loved ones and assembling them in a place where they thought was safe. Unfortunately, in the night, the killers went to the village where the people, mostly women and children, were assembled and killed all of them. The chairman of uh, uh, Mwangavul Development Association, Joseph Guankat, also confirmed the killing, describing it as callous. The Plateau State Governor, Caleb Mutfang, declared a 24-hour curfew on Mango local government on Tuesday. Uh, he said the decision followed the deteriorating security situation in the area after an unrest left several homes or houses, including churches and mosques, burnt down. The state is yet to recover from the Christmas Eve attacks on communities in three local government areas of the state. Gunmen had stormed Ndun, Ngyong, Morfet, Mokondari, Tamiso, Chiang, Chiang Tahore, and the likes. Uh, in B Mangu and Boko's area of the state, burning houses and shooting residents. Over 150 people were reportedly killed in the attack. Unfortunate. That's quite unfortunate. Very um, unfortunate. I think every arsenal, every, everything that we have should be going there right now. Because this happened, the, the first one was on um, Christmas Eve. They sent letters to them, mm. remember that that they were coming back again. Um, and you're seeing all of this happening. So what's, what's going on in, in Plateau right now? Why, why, is, why is there no military forces, um, air staff, naval staff, uh, Nigerian police force, like every, every force that we have, I would have expected that they should be there and start to protect the lives of these people. Well, you, you find that in Plateau State, you find that in Kaduna State, you find that in Bernu State, you find that in almost every state in the north. So where will the army go? Where will they not go? The disturbing thing is that it doesn't take a, a, a full army to root out these people mm -hmm. uh, wherever they are operating and all that. It takes intelligence to do that. But the unfortunate thing, like I said, is now that the, most of the people who are intelligence gatherers are, being, are the ones that are fingered as mm -hmm. being culpable in, in mm -hmm. all these activities. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? You send the army there, you pump money into security, and then the security people are the ones giving the information. So how do you fight that kind of crime? The security That's is already thing. breached. It's breached. So we don't know what we are going to do. But the thing is, if the police or the army or the navy or all the forces that you've mentioned uh, do well to build confidence in the people, the people will take it upon themselves to give the intelligence because nobody, intelligence doesn't succeed without the people. They are the ones on ground. They are the ones that will have the confidence that, oh, I could just stay somewhere and call the police and say this information like this, this is what I've heard, this is what I've seen. But if you see something, you say something, mm -hmm. and you enter into something, it is not <laughs> a good thing. You enter into trouble in most cases. So. The, the security forces should do more to build confidence so that we can be the ones yeah. to give the information. I mean, that's, that's just quite heart-wrenching. Um, we need to start doing everything that we can, pull out everything, everything in your arsenal, um, just to you know, save the lives and properties, because every life matters. 
I mean, we can be in the urban area, the suburbs, and say, oh, I'm protected, I'm protected. But look at what is going on in Abuja. People are being, you know, kidnapped and killed. All of these other states that you've, you've, you've talked about, Borneo, um, Kaduna, now Plateau as well. I mean, we do, security takes a chunk of our budget. Mm -hmm. So for that money, where's that money going to? Why are we not so using it just tells you that it's not how many guns you have. Mm -hmm. It's not how many helicopters you have. It's, it's the people themselves. Yes. So if the chunk of the money going into security, for instance, was going into education, and going into job creation. Mm -hmm. There's some of these people that, a criminal is a criminal, yes, but there are some people who are criminals because of the condition they mm -hmm. find themselves. Mm -hmm. And then when they taste it and see, uh, not that the Lord is good, but <laughs> they taste it and see that the money there is so good, uh, they, ju they just stay there mm. and they forget about being good at all. How do you expect someone to go into kidnapping, demand for 600 million naira, and then maybe the negotiations comes to uh, 100 million, that a as, a, as a civil servant, he will not end for 36 years, and, and you expect him to come back and all that. So mm -hmm. we are encouraging a lot of things that should never be. So pump a lot of money into job creation, pump a lot of money into education, and the criminality will reduce whether yeah. we like it or not. Just try to eradicate it out. All right, this is where we're going to take a short <laughs> break um, because this is quite some sad news. So we're going to take a short break right now. And when we come back, we'll be looking at what the national dailies are saying this morning. But first, let's check out the weather season.